everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. It is something strange in your high school. Who are you going to call? <sighs> An awesome brownie reviewer, Silver Quill. I want their school budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can establish that this school is not placed in America. Uh, my, my, my alternative intro was going to be High school kids are motorcycles I am so glad that nobody is making reference to the Hunger Games yet That makes me so happy <sighs> And today, in a very special review episode of the MBS show We're going to be talking about Equestria Girls Friendship Games That is the third installment of the Horses Are Humans and vice versa a spin-off based on the successful MLP FIM TV show, which is that uh, this movie is directed by a uh, newcomer, Ishi Rudel, with Jason Thyssen as a consulting director, and written by Josh Haber, with, of course, music by William Anderson and Daniel Ingram. So, oof, uh, where to begin with this movie, really? Should we talk about the synopsis? Go ahead, man. This movie takes place right after the second Equestria Girls movie, Rainbow Rocks, and we continue where, from where the, that one, uh, we pick it up from where that, that one left it. And, uh, they, uh, well, they are preparing for the friendship games, which puts Canterlot High against the Crystal Prep High School, uh, every four years. And then the human main six find out that there is an, uh, a Twilight Sparkle, a human Twilight Sparkle in the in their universe, but she is attending to Crystal Prep, so they're gonna they're gonna have to face against her on the friendship games. I guess that's that's the way to put it, because there is a few more things on to this movie, but then there is not that much. That's the long and the short of it. I guess the only other thing that worth mentioning is, oh look, we've we've made humanized versions of even more characters. Huzzah! Yay! And they are completely irrelevant. <laughs> totally but, relevant. Uh, you can't you can't believe it's taken this long to help with what's her face, sir? That one guy. I don't know. There are many guys who are just what's her face. But we're getting a bit of uh, a bit ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about uh let, let's give uh, first impressions. Let's let's see what, what we think of this movie because I mean this is the third movie, the second sequel. Which are you by 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 uh as history has proven they are bound to fail unless they are part of a of an ongoing story and even when they do, when they are they fail as well Godfather Part, part Three mm-hmm. uh so guys what do you think of this movie and as usual I go inverted alphabetical order because it's what I prefer so uh we start with you Silver what do you think of this film well let's see here it's first off this movie has a very important message. Darwinism is baloney. <laughs> because you look at how these people behave when they are threatened by magical monstrosities or very, very real physical danger, and they're just chillaxing. <laughs> you people are so dumb. Every Equestria Girls has the stigma, we're doing this to sell the toys. Mm-hmm. We introduce these characters, go buy the toys. We introduce a musical aspect with stages, costumes, go buy the toys. We've introduced a whole other school with counterparts of the main six. Go buy the toys. Hey, guess what? I can't remember any of their names. And I don't feel I have to. And that's the thing that gets me. This is overloaded with characters, and so many of them are superfluous. Now, the the heart of this the, is, again, Sunset Shimmer. Now, and, and add to that human world Twilight. Uh, I, I think uh, Norman called her Psy Twy. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody is calling her. Oh, very nice. Very fun. But really, the the focus for me is always on Sunset Shimmer. She's the heart of this because she is the one new element that it's bringing to the table, other than a gimmick. Everyone's everyone's human now. But that's also kind of hard when you realize that in a movie chock full of characters, only one is really supposed to have any deeper meaning. And again, Sai Twai is a really lovable character, but... In in the end, I feel like she's set up to complete Sunset's journey more than anything else. She's more a tool than she is a, than she is an actual character, you say. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, I think I, I know exactly where you're coming from. W- what about you, Norman? 
the whole setup for this one for me is it was on a Saturday as per usual. Just watched the premiere of I forgot that one episode was on the same day. I think it was ma- uh, Made in Manhattan. But anyway, this movie came out at night, which was unheard of for me because I never knew the hub to sorry not the hub but I never knew Discovery Channel or Discovery Family to show this episode at that time so not many people knew and the ratings were yeah but when I woke up I was on a live stream I watched it and it was worth the watch it was worth it and oh my god was it so much fun I totally enjoyed the movie. I I don't know what to say. It's just awesome. I I just entirely enjoyed it. <laughs> You'll say you may have a problem with it. Not as um, bad as you, man. <laughs> oh, oh, the gauntlet oh. she's throw. <laughs> you have a problem, Norman. You need to get into a rehab clinic. You <laughs> mean, have you watched it? Oh gosh. Okay. Okay. Norman doesn't have a problem with the movie. I do. I I, I watched it premiere on the on the Discovery Family Channel as well. Uh, the, the same way that Norman did. In fact, we were commenting the movie as we were watching it, and uh, we were kind of like getting our minds blown together at the same time. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I watched the movie then. The premiere was over. Uh, then I went to bed, woke up, watched the movie again. Then I watched Matt Munchkin's review of it, and then I watched the movie again. And after the movie was over, I watched an episode of, of the TV show. And then I watched the movie again. <laughs> In between the premiere and now, I must have watched the movie ten times or so. Oh my gosh. It's it's the first Equestria Girls movie all over again. Except it's not as bad. Um, remember when I was talking about the uncanny valley of Uwe Ball in the previous review of Rainbow Rocks? Yeah. This is... This is them getting out of that uncanny valley is that they start bad so bad that it's really enjoyable then it gets to ah, it's it's an okay quality but it's not all that enjoyable now it's both in my opinion it both has the quality and it both has the the quality and the enjoyability what i can i think i can i can watch this movie in repeat and don't get sick of it or at least take a while before i get sick of it so <laughs> yeah i i think this is this is better than the, the first two movies combined. <laughs> in, in my own humble opinion, I like this movie way more than I like both the, the, the other two. Well, I will tell you why I think that as we start talking about the movie. So uh, let's not delay any further. We're going to go hip deep into spoilers. If you haven't watched the movie yet, uh, go watch it. It's, uh, it's out there. And if you want to buy it on DVD, it's coming out on the 22nd of, on the twin, on the 2nd of November. So you, you, you can still get a hold of it. But before we officially start, I would like to thank all all seventy four percent of you guys out there who voted for this. Like, because of you guys, we are doing this ASAP. Like, what? Uh, two weeks, three weeks after the movie uh, premiered, something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, thank you guys. Because if not, uh, we would just have left this behind and let it simmer and cool down, and maybe we'll forget about it. <laughs> but no, this is fresh off the presses and. We are really going in deep. And the other 26%, let's see some more hustle next time. Well, they wanted the comics. Let's see some way more hustle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we start the movie on Canterlot High with Sunset Shimmer running to meet with Rainbow Dash, who left her a very important, very uh, alarming message saying is something going on is it's the world coming to an end as a third time <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, you can tell just make it our string broke <laughs> but you can you got to mention they they had a golden opportunity for an opening theme song here oh opening shot is of uh sunset shimmer running just a close up on her calves <laughs> she's got legs <laughs> she knows how to use them I have to be impressed with something. Sunset's running in high heel boots. Well, hey, even Big Macintosh proved that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I, you, I you would, know. I would, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone ever. All fashion is based on torture. Mm-hmm. I have no idea who invented high heels, but they are in the seventh layer of hell right now. 
ties are based on the get on the noose, as far as I can tell. Oh wow! So I am still more I am still more impressed that they changed the designs of, of this. Like, do you you guys remember the designs of the first movie? Those giant, massive boots that they they went all the way up to the knee. At least these ones look a bit more conservative. Oh, for <laughs> Sunset, she's the only one that changed. Like, we need to mention that Sunset's clothing design has changed a lot. Like, if you guys seen the short, um, My Past Is Not Today, that was the first time we saw her, and everybody was geeking out, everybody was, like, screaming hype. Like, they love the new sunset. And seeing it here in action, it works. It really, really works. My question, though, is, why is her cutie mark not on the clothing now? Did they think the journal was enough? Uh, no, it's on her backpack, but that's true. Um, it could be one of those situations where her cutie mark is on the back of her jacket, like a certain King of Fighter character, very popular. Okay, if she wow. throws a, if she throws her hat and says, "Okay," <laughs> oh, oh, uh, that'd be a great oh, speech just... at the end, at the end of the movie. She's telling everyone, "Get serious." <laughs> <laughs> and now, now you're gonna have another team trying to build a King of Fighters reskin with the Equestria Girls characters. Uh, <laughs> I can see that actually. I can actually see that. Actually, now I can. Now I want Equestria Girls Five Real Bout. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, well, we have Skull Girls. Why not? No, why not Equestria Girls? Oh, yeah, true that. Right. Mm-hmm. But moving on to that, we have Twilight, or, uh, what's that called? A PKE reader or something like that? Oh, the EKG reader. Mm. reader. Yeah, well, aren't we skipping the, the, the journal writing scene? Well, we get, yeah, there's not a lot to say about the journal. She just is writing, hey, Twilight, how you doing? Mm-hmm. Things are good. It's just one of those casual things, like she's sending an SMS to Princess Twilight. But this one is interesting, like, talk about callback, talk about, uh, what you want to call this? Pop culture reference? Shout out? Shout, yeah, talk about shout out, talk about, um, homages, like, that thing, like, whoever have not seen Ghostbusters should watch that and watch this, like, that thing, <laughs> so much fun. And it's purple. Yeah. Which makes it, which makes it cool. Yeah. Also, <laughs> we talk, we talk about redesigning, dig the tennis shoes that, uh, I'm just gonna call her Twilight because yeah, it's getting it's getting old to to have to say side Twy and regular Twy and locale Twy. Uh, besides, I when guess. you say side Twy, it sounds like you're tired. You're like ah, Twy, well, side Twy. Well, Princess Twilight won't be coming <laughs> coming, so yeah, I think we can just address her as Twilight. And then, of course, you could always talk about a Moon Dancer. I can't believe it's not Twy. <laughs> oh wow. But thankfully, it's not as disappointing as I can't believe it's not better. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, but okay. getting back on track, getting back on track. Um... It had Favio's <laughs> endorsement. Favio! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, here we discover that it's actually the this, this world's Twilight Sparkle that studies at Crystal Prep. And then we're given the title credits. And the title credits are... I, I, like, I personally like this more than, than the previous two. But I have heard some like, wow, it doesn't have the same outlines as Rainbow Rocks. They're not as impressive. Mm, I'm quite, I, I do like this one. For whatever reason, while watching the title intro, it reminded me of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure with the poses. Thank God, the poses. <laughs> I know. Uh, but as an intro, this was pretty okay. But honestly speaking, it seems like they were not pushing the boundaries. Well, what do you say? You're saying that maybe they're phoning it in? Not really. I mean, it's okay as an entitled screen intro, but if you take a look see at the first one and the second one, those were kind of pushing it with the outlines and whatnot. Not saying that I hate it, it's just different. What about you, Silver? What do you think? I'm remembering the first the first Equestria Girls intro was just outlines and a remix of the show. The second one was the silhouettes and actually I, I didn't, it had my least favorite song in the movie because it was all just, oh, what, uh, what, uh, to quote a far wiser man than I, 
Words that use nanas, hey heys, and doo doos as lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, it's this may actually be one of the stronger intros for me. It's showing Twilight's obsession about this school, using using the the thread connections as a, to lead into the credits, and it gets to show the heroines in heroic poses, especially Sunset Shimmer. Which again, she's kind of the heart of these movies. Which might explain why the Equestria Girls, the first one, is the lowest. Because that's, I didn't give two figs about that sunset shimmer. Mm-hmm. Although, one would think Twilight would take note of the thread of dark energy just rushing around her bulletin board. <laughs> her powers of observation are rather lacking. I think that's just artistic merits there. <laughs> well, let's see here. Mm. We could, we could always start a fresh debate. Who has the best pose right as the friendship game title starts? Because it says Shimmer comes running on screen, stop and pose, and her lackeys, I mean friends, <laughs> show up behind. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. No comment, but I do like Sunset's pose. Really awesome. Uh, I actually go for Rainbow Dash. Yeah. She seems to have the right amount of swag. <laughs> true that, true that. I, I think I like Pinky because she's the one that is like the funniest. One, like, she she was, maybe, uh, she looks like she was caught mid troll, or kind of like, I'm doing something, say, oh, no, wait a minute, don't snap the picture. You didn't snap the picture, did you? <laughs> oh, you did. Oh, never mind. In terms of, like, uh, rating, this title credit sequence, better or worse than the other two? Better. I like it. Better. Yeah, I like it, too. I think it's a bit more forward. Besides, I don't know any other animated movie that starts the film... Crediting the voice actors for the for their work. Because struggles one and two. Yeah, I know. I mean, this is like one of the few movie series that uh, animated ones that give credit to the actors before the movie starts. Not hundred percent sure. Need to double check, but yeah, we can always <laughs> later on. After the title credits, we go back to Twilight's uh, Twilight's little cubicle where she's building. Uh, Iron Man's arc reactor, right? That's the first thing that I thought when I saw that scene. It's like, she's building Iron Man's arc reactor. What? What? What's she doing? It looks like it. Well, that's great. She's using an EKG meter. She's building Iron Man's arc reactor. Next next thing you know, she'll be locating the Ark of the Covenant. Well, I think, James, you skipped a whole uh, session of why are they doing this and who was the mysterious girl in front of the statue before that. No, I'm not. After the credits, they go straight to the, they go straight to Twilight building that and then they go to the next thing where they're trying to figure out who it was. Really now, because from the wiki page, it shows that. Yeah, well, the wiki page is wrong. Don't take everything that the wiki page shows you as, uh, as correct. Do not I watched the movie the types, upon you know? the wiki page, for it will abandon you. I know what I'm talking about, Norman. I watched the movie ten times, okay? Alright. Alright. <laughs> Mediocre. <laughs> so yeah they're trying to figure out who this girl was and they figure out that she is part of Crystal Prep because she was fiddling around with the statue which is what Crystal Prep does every time that they win uh, the Friendship Games competition to which Sunset Shimmer is like well that is a bit silly and everyone is like what do you mean silly and she's like well after all we've been through this is kind of like something a bit petty and she's like well and they're like well not everything has to be a world ending disaster but once you survived a world ending disaster you kind of realize how empty those silly little things are really if i i'll say i'll say this as spoiler for what we're going to talk about this movie really mucks up the message about uh, games and sportsmanship or oh, sports it does. Ma- sports mayorship if you will <laughs> Wait, if I'm not mistaken, they say sportsmanship in the show, in the actual show. Sportsmanship. Why? Really? Because human, sportsmanship? Because human? Did they say that? I thought it's sportsmanship. No, I, I, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Probably. But that's the topic for another day. But there's one line from Sunset in particular that just screams, what the hey? But we're not there yet. So... After they, they are like, uh, they are like, look, this is very important to us. We care for this. We cannot let these guys win again, which is what we are used to. So we got to the, uh, to the first of many musical numbers that this movie has. 
and it, it's it's weird. I don't remember the, the because it's not a musical th- musical theme one like Rainbow Rock, so they didn't really hammer on the musical numbers all that much. Which is good, which is following the theme. Yeah, uh, but I agree. Sometimes you get you can get burn out of uh, so many musical numbers, especially when they shove them down your throat. But uh, okay, here we have like the rally song, how uh, Rainbow Dash's motivational speech turns into. Uh, into a full-fledged musical number. After everyone has <laughs> doubts about her, her ability to inspire the troops. Even, even Rarity, like, oh my. Rarity's not even sure. Like, oh god, is, is, is she serious? Is she starting off with this? Even Flash and Pinkie Pie were just, oh, come on. We need to talk about Flash yes, at one point in yes. the movie. We really need to talk about that yes. guy. But... <laughs> But yeah, the thing with uh, with this is that they are very like in the dumps when it comes to motivation. They are like, ah, oh, whatever. Ah, oh, we always lose. Now we are not going to win this time. But uh, Rainbow Dash, with no little help from uh, DJ Pontry, they they manage to rally up the troops so much that Rainbow Dash ends up ends up ponying up. And that's a term that we are going to be using a lot in this review because that's what they are using to. Describe when they turn into, you know, when they, they when they grow wings and ears and their hair extensions, their hair grows, yeah, where they, when their hair grows long, <laughs> they call it pony it up, mm-hmm. pony up. Still, actually, okay. I call it I call it uh, being demified. <laughs> Why? Okay, their ears melt away and are replaced by horse bits. No, their ears are still there. Their human ears are not. They get a hair overflow that. That fills in the gap, which is why you'll never see a guy pony up. I, I think when Applejack pony up, her human ears are still there. No, no, never mind. I don't know. Really? I don't know. Be, that if they were, that'd be a, a very strong animation error. Hmm. But here's my question. If your average Joe, not of Cantalot High, saw this, what would he think? He'd probably... Witch! Witch! After two times of experiencing magic, I think he'll be... Um, nullified. Like this is just normal. I th- I think they'll be like, well, call the police. We got ourselves a mutant. I guess the Marvel characters was right. Uh, no, we need Xavier. Uh, it's absolutely hilarious though, because that's that's a very good point, and that's the one thing is that they tra- they treat magic as something so they are. It, it's such a domestic occurrence in this high school, mm-hmm. and. It, it's 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 only funnier when uh, Vice Principal Luna comes to them after and saying, "Hey, you, watch it. You stop that," and then goes away. It's like, okay, fine. Well, I, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's that basic. I I think Princess, no, <laughs> I think Vice Principal Luna is just telling them to try and control it be, because they don't want to be accused of cheating in the friendship games, which is a legit um, fear and legit concern. So yeah, and since Sunset was the expert in all things magical because well it's her domain, so she's charged into looking at how to control it. And she immediately starts stressing. Oh, yeah. This reminds me of someone. All of us? Yeah. That and the and Princess Twilight from the second movie. Uh Sunset Sunset's less of a neurotic breakdown Yeesh. worry. But she's more an angry warrior. Mm. That might be worse. Mm. That is bad. Although I gotta say, I want to divert real quick to talk about just the idea of the friendship mm. games, because I find such a laugh about it. I don't know what uh, inter-school sports are like in your countries. Here in America, it's this—it's pure tribe mentality. Really? How so? Within the school, you have these group tensions. Uh, a lot of places, athletes are you know, the top dogs, and they can, they can and often do make life harder for other groups, especially people who are hazed, you know, bullying issues. The arts programs resent the hell out of the sports programs because the sports programs get most of the budgeting. But then, when suddenly we're supposed to play against another school, you know, the other team, another community, suddenly everyone's supposed to rally behind the sports team and be so excited for this. And often we do. At least you attend those rallies and you cheer. But deep down, you're like, why do I care? These guys, are, if these guys win, the world won't end. Our lot in life is not going to improve. We're not the plucky underdogs of the movies. 
And I just think, wow, this is tribe mentality. It's us versus them. So you 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 can you can say that you can totally see Sunset Shimmer's point of view in that case. In that case <laughs> like yeah. this is not the end of the world. Well, I do see that logic there, but also the fact that CHS is more a matter of pride because I'm assuming that the girls here, the main six or the main five, when they attended high school, they were juniors. So when their senpais were trashed by Crystal Prep, they felt that they needed to step up. And four years later, they're in that position to step up. But thinking about it, this is the lowest stakes they've set for the movie. Yes, I do agree. First movie, rescue the crown and you know restore Equestria's Grace Defense. Mm-hmm. Movie two, there are brainwashing sirens. Mm-hmm. Movie three, it's a matter of pride, but this is CHS we're talking about. They've been brainwashed twice. They have no pride. <laughs> True. No, but okay, Here, here's a funny scenario in the movie where it's a normal, typical movie where it's your sports movie. Yay. And then in the middle, they did a twist. When we reach that twist, we'll explain it. But it's technically kind of okay. It's nothing impressive yet. When you were saying about uh, how things are over over here when it comes to like school rivalries and all that, uh, when I went to high school, we didn't have any sort of thing like this. We didn't have competitions against other high schools or anything. We did have competitions within the high school. We have it limited to like uh, classes and years and like uh, people of different ages, but within the high school, not with other high schools. Um, we I, I don't know. I I don't know the way that it works over there. I wouldn't say anything because, th- to be honest, what I I don't, I don't talk about what I don't know. So I I I'd rather not say anything for the sake of not pissing off anybody. Um, but I I I'd say like with high school, with with all things that involve high school, if you make a big deal out of the things that happen to high school, uh, uh that happened to you during high school. Just give it a give it give it a moment. Give it a few years. It will eventually go away. It will stop being relevant because it's high school. It, it stops being relevant as soon as you get out of the door. So I think I, I I know exactly where Sunset is coming on that regard. But as the song says, high school never ends. <laughs> and everybody is like, uh, uh, all, all of us between our, uh, in our thirties and our twenties, we are like, no. <laughs> well, let's go to the other high school, Crystal Prep. Uh, oh, let's not. Yeah, let's go to Crystal Prep. Let's, let's not. There's nothing good there except Spike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, wow. Uh, Spike with the best voice acting role in the movie. Yeah, woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you know, it makes me wonder if Kathy Weislack was also making the voice yes. of Spike when he was barking. Yes, she did. She yeah. was. You can tell. You, oh, my God. That can, woman is a treasure. Tell. I love Kathy Weislack. You can, you can tell oh by, by the barks. They're not real dog barks. They're um, her imitating, imitating them. Although I'd love I to hear the sound recording. Look, can I get just a little more emphasis on that last <laughs> wolf? I feel like you're holding back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, a little bit more golden retriever. Unless of a bull terrier, please. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> uh, Something tells me that was actually happened on the recording oh, stage. Uh, uh, cool. uh, but uh, the students um, at Crystal Prep Academy, they're interesting. We we see, for one, we get to see Fleur de Lis over there. Yeah, yeah you're forgetting one, Norman. Who else? You're forgetting Dean, Dean, Cad- Dean Cadence. <laughs> okay, I need to say something. Uh, Dean Cadence... Uh, Oh my god, what is wrong with her face? Okay, I know what is wrong with her face. She's suffering from shark tail disease. <laughs> what I find weird is, and I know this sounds weird, mm-hmm. again, weird, weird. We're she weird. wears this long mm-hmm. skirt, whereas the other principals wear pants, like, I don't know, big Not girl really, pants. Or because something. if you see, uh, Principal Abacus, um, who was it? Um, uh, Sint? Sint? Yeah, so boring. Her, yeah, her, she's wearing a skirt. Yeah. I, but I'm talking about the principles based on princesses. Uh, it's like that, it's like part, of, somehow that's supposed to be part of the royal link. So 
cadence isn't fully royal because they gave her a skirt? What? So it could be the aesthetic of the school. So it does look it's... normal if you think about it. Um, the principal for Crystal Preps wears a skirt, so should the vice principal. Either way, they're quite terrifying. Yeah. Well, besides, if she's a dean and her name is Cadence, shouldn't her name be Cadence? Uh, I'll go to the corner uh, now. Bye. <laughs> oh, speaking, speaking of huddling in the corner, Shining oh, Arm yeah. is a oh, jerk. But I have been critical of him in the show because they say he's a great brother and he don't do squat. But this one, my God. One, did he laser cut that chin? <laughs> oh, those perfect jaws. I There's, there's got to be like a sandblaster <laughs> he applies to himself. Ah! <laughs> but still, uh, uh, they, they they made Shining Armor with a 3D printer. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think we're skipping the song that, she, uh, that Twilight went through. That was a good song. Yeah, the, and... The thing is that they released an alternate version of that song as a, as a deleted mm-hmm. scene. Which was, I love the alternate song to that because if it did came out, the whole movie would be totally different. It would have changed the, the meaning for Sunset as mm-hmm. well as Twilight. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to review that because we didn't get that. It's just something that we would have to mention because it was in the deleted scene for the DVD. But, well, we got this song. It was Twilight. Reminiscing we, or thinking about we, stuff. We, we oh, wish we got We that wish. Song. That's honestly all the... That would have been a great song. Yeah. It's a great juxtaposition of both characters. And, well, it does say a lot because Sunset has been in the human world for a while now and she has the good graces of Princess Twilight. So it wouldn't be too bad for Sunset to, well, visit Equestria and see her friends, mentors, and whoever else. Well, either either but, way, it's basically yeah. your your classic Disney. I want more. Mm-hmm, yeah, but still, but still, uh, we we get the meeting with Principal Cinch, and well, Principal Cinch is ah, she's just mm. boring. How do I put this? <laughs> it's. It's like you have all of these other things that are really interesting, and suddenly she's like, "Aha! Uh-huh, I am just genetic villain number thirty-seven. Yeah, but I, I, she, okay, she's boring as they come. But if you think about it, she is evil. Not evil in like how the siren were or how uh, early generation one sunset was. This is just like you, you. What are you doing? Aren't you supposed to take care of the students and? Take care of the well-being. Oh, reputation, 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 uh, reputation, uh, and reputation. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. <laughs> reputation. <laughs> she, hmm. sw- she swallowed oh, wow. the turkey. Actually, there's there is one other thing she is a scapegoat. How so? Well, this is later on, but I feel like since we're going to be. I'd rather just talk about her now and kind of leave her alone for the rest. There's the scene where Pinky has successfully broken the ice and folks are getting out on the dance floor. And then she comes on, starts talking, and pretty much shuts everything down. And this is actually what they tried to do with Sunset in the first movie. They say, everything that's wrong right now is her fault. With Sunset, everyone at CHS is distrustful or or socially segregated because of her. Mm -hmm. You know, she broke up, she breaks up friendships, she inspires people to be angry, so on and so forth. Now, in this movie, oh, the reason these schools don't get along is because of this mean old principal. That's the reason all these other uh, uh, crystal prep folks are so stuck up. Grr, she's so evil. And I look at that and think, no, you, you, it'd be nice if we could blame all the world's ills on just one person. Goodness knows we try to do that with every president. But... You can't blame other people's attitudes on one person. True. They, in some way, buy, buy into it. But I think the only reason why people blame her is because that, well, people were having fun. People were interacting. People were becoming friends. And she was the one that stopped everything and pointed out the flaws in uh, CHS. So, as a normal person would... She, they would just have stopped it and say thank you and just be on their merry ways and get the game started. 
But no, she had to stab someone and twist the knife and point out the flaws in CHS. That's just proving it's saying it's all her fault. We're not, we don't want to try and flesh out the student body to say they've got the, they've got this negative competitive attitude. No, look, look at her. Look at what she's doing. It's all her fault. It's hard not to say that it's not her fault because the way that the students were brought up is in her vision of how things should have been, like a reputation to keep. And because of that, the students, well, they follow her. She's kind of the meanie one, the big one, the big bad guy that everybody must follow. Yeah, but she's just that. We have had bad guys that are more than just a bad guy. She is just a bad guy for the sake of, you know, redeeming all the other students at the end of the movie. And that's it. Like, uh, besides, she doesn't even get a a, a, a satisfying payoff. (laughs) She walks out of the movie, like, saying... Here's the thing also, here's the thing also, that she was never meant to be taken seriously. She was just the tool to, well, get the show running. That's about it. Uh, Well, it's not so much taken, taken seriously as much as it is. In the previous two movies, we had, uh, we had a mini mean girl that turns into a raging Mm -hmm. she demon. We have three ancient, uh, creatures that acquire human form and enchant everybody with Mm -hmm. their spell. In this one, we have a principal who's worried about uh, what it's basically amounts to a popularity, popularity contest. And she doesn't even turn out to be the one that turns into a demon at the end of the film. Like, I really appreciate that. But this is without a doubt the weakest villain that we have had on the, on all the Equestria Girls movies. That one. Like, in terms of face value villain, she was bad. Like, she was just the instigator. Face value, motivation, mm. character. It's like, she has nothing to her. At least Sonata had the tacos <laughs> going on, and Sunset turned, turned into the, the hero two mm-hmm. movie scene. But principal scene, she's just a tool. Mm-hmm. Tool. You could have a monkey wrench in there, and, and it could do it could do the yeah. exact same but thing. But from Crystal Prep, let's head back to CHS via bus. Oh yeah, so where we get to meet all the counterparts whose names I don't have. Oh yes, them. except Lemon Zest. I remember one. I remember one. I rem- the one with the with the goggles on top. Her name is Indigo Sap. I remember her. She's supposed to be the the opposite of Rainbow Dash. Yes. I have to ask you guys. Look at her color scheme again. She has a human tone color with blue hair. So when you ponyfy her, she has human tone coat and blue hairs. Isn't that a bit strange? Actually, uh, funny thing, I was walking in a Walmart last night. Mm-hmm. Which, that should, should immediately invoke terror. Uh, mm-hmm. I saw a Rose Luck, uh, pony in uh-huh. Quest Street Girls. I was like, wait, they made a figure of Rose Luck. She had human toned skin, even though, even on the cover, the pony was white. Sometimes they, they have to finesse the, the skin tone from the pony design, else they'll be accused of racism. But still, I mean, it's Rose Luck, so, eh. Where's the doctor? <laughs> it is, it, it is, uh, well, it is true though, but Rose Luck has always had human skin color she always had from the very beginning of the show because that kind of color with the red go, goes well I'm not sure about the, that color with the blue I'm going to have to ponify Indigo Sap and see what I do with it yeah but like I said like I mentioned like she as a design as a human design she looks cool but when you ponify her she's going to be looking strange all of them will likely look strange I I think someone did a pony plush of them. Huh. Oh no! Yeah, you're right. They did. They did ponyfy and plushify the shadow balls practically a day after the movie was out. Huh. Well, I I need to double check that one. Yeah, it was really posted it. So t- Twilight goes inside the bus and they recreate that scene in Forrest Gump where nobody lets Forrest sit on any of the seats. Was I the only one remembering that scene? Sorry, man. It's been a while since I watched Forrest Gump. Hey, yeah, Hush snapper. <laughs> and in the end, she sits at the back of the at the back of the bus. It's like this is all to reinforce how much she is a fish out of water and how the how not even her own high school really likes uh, her or supports her. It's like they they like to hammer this point a lot. They really like to insist on it. 
So th- there is no need to dwell on, on on it anymore. So we can we move to we move to uh, back to Canterlot High, where we see the human the human main six just playing their instruments, play, uh, playing music practicing. and all that, practicing and ponying up, ponying up and everything. And this is where they start talking about how does magic work and once again go back to Sunset trying to figure out how it uh, how it functions. Like, how are they supposed to use, to keep their magic outside of the friendship games? And this is where we have the scene where Rarity brings up the, her, her costumes, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Because they got no idea what kind of games they're gonna be playing in terms of sports. So, in, so she covers everything. From normal sports to lacrosse to welding and to cosplaying. Like, what? <laughs> I, think fr- I think these friendship games are really just a budget saving cost. All right, class, the, the next competition is who can renovate this building the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> and Sansa Streamer is like, I know how to put bricks together. I've done that in the first movie. Don't worry. I can take care of this. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that is fun. That's fun. And so, <laughs> as they discuss, Crystal Prep arrives. And Twilight noticed something. With her radar, she noticed magical powers. No, but before she notices magical powers, she realizes that everybody at Canterlot High is saying hi to her. Oh, yeah. And they are like, hey, Twilight, hey, Twilight, hey, Twilight. And they are way friendlier than her other high school. Mm-hmm. And she, at first she didn't notice, but as time goes on, she's like, how the hey do people know me? Like, who are these people? And I- she bumped into somebody special. And <laughs> really, really, who who was that? Uh some some guy named Vincent Tong. S- Silver, you keep saying on your reviews that you're getting very mean and you're getting really evil towards Flash and everything. Dude, you have nothing on this movie because they take <laughs> that and they 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 take a knife, they stab Flash Sentry with it, and they. Twisted with relish, and they love it because Twilight doesn't even acknowledge Flash. She's like, "Oh, look at that! He put on my glasses." Oh, wait a minute, Raider, bye. <laughs> and, Flash is, and Flash is like, "Okay, I'll see you later." And Derpy pats him on the shoulder. <laughs> now, now you can ship them. <laughs> oh wow, that'll be that'll be cool. Oh, Flash hopes. and Derpy Sentry. <laughs> <Sentry. laughs> I the, the thing uh, is, Flash has pretty much no presence in this movie. It's not. It's yeah. not even sporting to make fun of him. Here's the thing: Do you want him to be in more? Like last review, I said I wanted him more in the movie if possible, and well, that my wish didn't came true. But I'm guessing other people wish came true. I'm so I'm guessing. I think I mostly all I've ever wanted with Flash is for him to actually have a character and a purpose. Don't just be. A, a supposed love interest, especially one who the sole romantic interaction is having no spatial awareness at all. Let, let him be a part of the story if for real, and you'd be amazed at how people would actually get on board with him as a love interest or just as a character. They did a short with him, and I actually thought, hey, yeah, that's a little bit more, well, charming in a sense. You know, you get to see Flash had a little bit of some vanity, some egotism, an actual flaw to overcome. You know, something tells me that when they release the movie on DVD, it's going to be slightly longer, and they're going to include one or two deleted scenes. Like, not oh, yeah. that because when it, you know how the first movie, when it got released on the hub, they deleted a couple of scenes that were, were uh, that were in the final cut, but they were not on the TV version. They even skipped an entire musical number, and Trixie wasn't even uh, seen in the movie at all. Who knows if they will if they will include one more vignette with Flash or any of the other characters? They may, they may not. You, we don't know that yet. Probably, probably. Although, uh, sorry, losing my train. I thought here with old Flashy Poo, where he says, <laughs> "What what are the <laughs> Flashy Poo? <laughs> Flashy Poo? <laughs> sorry." With his song, "Love in a Flash." All I can think of is the Justice League. So, so that's why you can't hold on to a girlfriend? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I went there. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, I'm uh, sorry. 
Wait a minute, isn't that what happened to Peter Parker at the end of Spider-Man 2? Oh! 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 Well, anyway. Uh, nah, he just fi- he just fired his webbing too soon. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, as Applejack tries to tell Applejack, isn't doing all this a waste of time and energy? And Rarity says, nonsense, darling. I do this because I love to do it. And it gives me great joy. And she ponies up. And when she ponies up, Twilight's PKE meter senses magical but power. Yeah, and PKE meter open... is the medallion that she has hanging from her. You know, the radar medallion portal absorbing magic thingy that... We should talk about that. Okay, mm-hmm. let's stop the movie for the movie review for a second. Let's talk about the mechanics of that medallion. How can someone build something like that? Talk about Tony Stark building a suit of armor and an arc reactor in a cave with a box of scraps. Twilight builds something that Aperture Science would patent in like a in like a millisecond. Like, <laughs> how do you how do you absorb magic with that thing? What is the very, mechanics of that? Very carefully. My God, I don't know because here, here's the thing: if we were to really sit down and think really hard about it and ask how does it do it I we won't find an answer because we got no idea and the logic here we got no idea at all even with Ghostbusters PKE meter they did some scientific mumbo jumbo and in the end we still got no idea it's multiple reflection sorting something like that no it's ridiculous but well Let's just wave it off and say, it's magic, you don't have to explain nothing. Ah, but it's science! (laughs) And to be honest, I I will say this, I I chalk this up to the same thing as Vinyl's transforming car in the second Mm -hmm. movie. It's absurd, it's counterproductive, but in a certain way there's a charm about it. It's the movie saying, yeah, even this world can have its absurdities, it's magic Mm -hmm. science now. So, wait, Silver, what you're saying is, don't you know anything about science? Of course! (laughs) You know what, what if they make a toy out of the portal absorbing thingy? Can you imagine? Hey kids, did you ever want to send your brother to another dimension so he doesn't bother you anymore? Yay! Now you can! We thought it sparkles PKE portal absorber thingy medallion stuff that we don't know how it works. Patented by Aperture Science. (laughs) But... Continuing on. <laughs> what? Okay, but yeah, this is where the, this is where the, the human basics meet with this world's twilight. And uh, even Principal Celestia, accompanied with Principal Cinch, uh, they, uh, they, they meet with her and all that. And this is where the main six realize that, hey, look at that. This twilight sparkle is actually going to be fi- uh, competing against us. Ah, uh, okay. H- how is this a problem, I guess? I, I just love Celestia's reaction here. It's like, Twilight? And then, like, she goes like, I didn't know Twilight had a twin sister. <laughs> Evil Twilight. Uh, and after hearing Pinky's explanation, she just, um, Never mind. Okay, I'm going that way. Alrighty then. Which just shows the level of competency of her as a principal. Uh, sometimes you don't question things, Silver. Sometimes you just don't question things. I'm not you questioning do. I'm just... I'm just giving up hope. <laughs> you need to question things when you're responsible of a, a body of students. You you cannot you cannot be this dismissive. Let me say this: uh, Celestia's reaction should have been, "Twilight, you've missed several weeks of school. I'm sorry, but you're in detention." <laughs> oh, would that be funny? Uh, but we go to the main six as they talk about how dare our this world's Twilight goes to the crystal prep and will be fighting against us. Ooh, she's evil. Or they're just taking the rivalry too far. Ah, uh, true that. Might as well take in the rivalry way too far. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, why not, right? <laughs> There's nothing to lose. But anyway, uh, as the girls go ready up, Sunset, well, in a fit of desperation, she wants to see what Princess Twilight is doing. Like, did she reply her messages or not? This is one of my favorite moments in the entire movie, actually. When uh, Sunset is approaching the portal and says, like, maybe there is another way for me to get in contact with her. And then as soon as she touches the portal, the, the, it's like dark red flames coming from her hands on the portal. It's, wow, what's going on here? And 
it's that twilight, the science twilight, is absorbing the the magic of the portal into her pendant medallion thingy, and because of doing that, the portal suddenly stops working and it it, it disappears. Mm-hmm. I think that is that that works in favor of the movie, and that's the other thing that makes this movie so much better than the other two combined in my eyes, is that we cannot de- they cannot depend on on Equestria to save them anymore. They don't. They cannot depend on Princess Twilight coming through the portal. It's like, okay, here we go. La li la li la li la. Once again, we're gonna be in Twilight here. They don't do that. They don't need to do that. Now it can stand on its own. Technically, that's true, but I don't feel the looming threat of, well, the portal's gone. What do we do? Panic, panic, panic. I, I didn't feel that. Like. The portal being you, gone is kind of think, an offhand don't, don't you think thing. Sunset's uh, terrified expression as she's looking at the portal isn't enough oh, to yeah. convey the, the, oh no, <laughs> yeah, she, we are screwed, guys. Yeah, she, we she, are she's, screwed. She's screwed, but when she goes talk about it with the other five, and after talking to them, she didn't really seem that too concerned. You know what I mean? Maybe she calmed down after freaking out about it. Yeah, but if you think about it, that's her only way home, or uh, uh, the only door where Princess Twilight can come through. So now she's well and truly cut off from her old life. Yeah, but there's still a party to attend, like the welcoming party for Crystal Prep. So, in another feat of marketing, the girls change clothes. This clothing choice are pretty good, I like it. Well, at least they do change clothes, not like in the first movie where they stick with the same clothes for like, what, three, four days? But, James, I go back to what Silver said in the very beginning, is to sell product. No, product, it's product, to sell product, but, pe- but people change clothes. Yeah, it's but... like, okay, sell all the products that you want, but I am not wearing the same clothes that I was wearing yesterday because... The clothes, by just sheer amount of uh, stuff that our body produces, they get dirty. Yeah. So you want to change clothes. I like that. That's Yeah, I mean, yeah okay. Still... Say that it's to, se- to sell product and all that, but... Oh my god, I'm so happy to see that they are changing to another different outfit. Yeah, true. Like, I mean... dude, after, after a while, those outfits will start to rank. Yeah, true. But in terms of um, lo- um, body logic, or just in terms of logic, yes, changing Clothes is something you do every day. You don't wear the same clothes every day, like a cartoon character. Oh wait, they're cartoon characters. But seeing yeah, them they're change... cartoon characters. But what is so bad about adding some realism to it? Budget, not... but but <sighs> them doing this. Hey, I do like how they approach the marketing aspect. Where okay, we need to show that the dolls have new clothes that they can wear. Oh, here they are. Show it to the kids. They would want to buy it up. I do like it. It's a really good way. It's not intrusive. Well, I just, I just view it as merchandising, merchandising. <laughs> my little pony, the lunchbox. My little <laughs> pony, the t-shirt. Say with me now. My little my pony, little the flamethrower. Flame flame yes. I didn't even notice that they changed clothes until you guys brought that up. Yes. But for marketing reasons, but it's not in the same, it's not in the next day, it's technically in the same day. I don't know how this works, I don't know how long Crystal Prep stays there, but it's just interesting to see. They don't give us a proper time period, for all we could know, it's just in the same day. Well, who, who knows, time is time is malleable in this. Remember, this is, the, this is the show that likes to say moons instead of actual Month. time. Mm, true that. Uh, well, but here's the scene where you guys were talking about with the party. So do we? So do we skip this, or do we? Um... I think we can. I think we can skip it. We talk about this one already, and really, the only thing that is that is worth mentioning is that Twilight absorbs Pinkie Pie's magic, and mm. that causes a rift that opens into the Everfree Forest. Mm, true. Like that. for a brief second, but it, it is the Everfree Forest. Now this does highlight Twilight's recklessness. That, that this is her vice in the whole movie. Normally, when someone sees a giant portal fo- forming in front of them, they're like, "Okay, not doing that again." <laughs> the yeah. mind of a the mind of a scientific engineer. I wonder if that happened if I did it again. <laughs> oh yes, but still. Uh, and with that, the game begins. The game begins, starting off with 
um, academic uh, duel. Academic where, deca- decathlon or something, yeah, like that. something like that. Where it's... Um, what was the first games? Uh, science. science. Yeah, they are making... A, no. What was the, no, the first, no, the first one is bacon, right? No, no, they the are first making game a cake. was science, where derpy blew up. And then... Oh, bacon. no, you're right. Yeah. Science, bacon, then they are making a birdhouse. birdhouse. And then the, the spelling, spelling bee, bee, which everybody fails. Except sunset <laughs> and twilight. And last was a really hard math question. Never before has the student body been so enraptured by math. Uh, no comment. But the song was no, awesome it, here too. The song I like was the awesome. song. The song is really, yeah, the song is really good. I agree. The song is really, really good. Very memorable as well. There is one element though that makes me raise an eyebrow. Which is? And, oh. So, all right. We start, we start off this decathlon with 12 on each side, but they promise that by the end they'll have to whittle it down to six per team. Mm-hmm. Uh, five per team. Yeah. So like, gee, I wonder who's going to uh, be six. on this. Well then who is the sixth member of Cantalot High. Twilight. The, oh, yeah. Sunset? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I miss, I miss counting. There's six on both sides. Yeah. So I like, gee, who's going to be on Cantalot High, I wonder? Oh, look, it's the main six. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then, oh, look, it's their counterparts on Crystal High. You're telling me that in a competition that's going to favor athleticism and perhaps a feat of strength, you don't want to make sure at least one guy makes it to the second round? I, and I know people will get upset, or women can be as strong as men. Yes, they can. But at the same time, when you have two students' bodies under the same training regimen getting ready for these games, I think it's a safe bet. So like, why is at least the token character? And I like, and I laugh because, you know, token characters stink, but not having any may actually be worse. Although I do appreciate the fact that they don't they don't put Sunset and Twilight against the same uh against the same test in the in the next uh phase of the of the friendship games. Mm-hmm. Like it would have been so easy to put the both of them on the motorcycle test, but no they don't. Well By the way, we... motorcycles, really? Yeah, but, but before we head off to that, we, we need to mention that Twilight Sparkles is that Twilight Sparkle sucks the magic out of Fluttershy. And in between that... Oh, uh, God, yeah, it is. Yeah, in, <laughs> in yeah, between... Yeah, the, hmm? yeah like, uh, when yeah when Twilight sucks the magic out of Fluttershy, that opens up a bunch of portals, and a jackalope slips oh, yeah. out, out into the world. The spike starts chasing it and going from portal to portal, and on the process of doing that, he gets up by uh, Fluttershy's magic. Mm-hmm. And that gives him the ability to talk. Yeah. Wait, uh, talking about jackalopes, wasn't the jackalope in the comics like uh, the return of Queen Chrysalis? Yep, uh, the mortal enemy of the Chupacabras. Ah. They, uh, yes. But I think I think we also saw the jackalope in the show. Yeah, but no, I'm just fascinated by what Fluttershy said in the comics. Ain't nature fascinating? But. Uh... Basically, the whole point of these games is really to say Candlelight High is awesome because they don't berate each other for losing, mm-hmm. and Crystal Perhaps sucks. Yeah, I just think, man, this is this is what you've been building up. You introduce all these characters just to say these guys suck. <laughs> I don't think about it that way. In terms of how Crystal Prep is brought up. They value more individual winnings instead of team winnings. So when Twilight was the one to kind of um, win the games, everybody didn't really care. Plus, since Twilight was not that very popular, and having the unpopular one win the games feels like, uh, well, a salty win. That's all I can say. I think Fluttershy said it best. They're not excited about victory unless it's unless they're the ones who do it. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. The well, then again, that kind of mentality kind of exists, can exist. Within, oh, it does no, exist. No, 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 no. It, does it does exist within high school because I have seen it. Uh, the, 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 all the jokes, winning things, and being celebrated while all the nerdy types, they do things right and nobody gives them credit for it. It all depends on the games too because in... Yeah, it American, also depends on the high school. Yeah. It also depends on the high school. High school and games because in terms of American football... The quarterback is always the star, 
And when the quarterback wins, yay, he has an overload ego. But if the team wins, yay, everybody is happy, but nobody, the jock is not happy about it because he didn't win the game. If you start talking about, if you start comparing things with uh, American football and baseball terms and all that, I'm going to get so lost. Because yeah. I am completely, in, I am illiterate when it comes to American sports. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, please don't kill me. <laughs> Yeah, so you're saying, you're saying trying to understand would be a seventh inning stretch, huh? Ah. <laughs> uh, well, they came, that came I out of left field. You know what? I, oh, you guys. <laughs> I am not, I am not versed on this kind of sport and even I know those are puns. I hate you both. <laughs> are you, are you gonna cry foul ball? <laughs> uh, you gonna play a red card? Oh, God, I gotta hate you all. I'm I'm afraid he's he's not he's not liking my pitch. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm gonna go can, lay down now. I guess you can say swing it and miss. Uh, we are they, losing focus here. <laughs> hey, sports, sports. You know, just uh, keep on the line drive before you get home. Yeah. My God. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Okay. Anyway, uh, so after Twilight sucks the magic out of Fluttershy and Spike gains the ability to talk again, they uh, reveal the field for the next test, the, 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 for the next uh, stage of the friendship games. Mm-hmm. And I agree with Sunset Shimmer on that comment. It's a bit overkill. <laughs> you don't Motocross, say. Really, in a high school. Motoc- I know that you guys are trying to sell a toy, but come on. Teenagers on motorcycles. Okay, here's, I, I have to mention, I, I have to mention this. In terms of toy ploy, it is, oh my god, blatant. This is so blatant that even Yu-Gi-Oh is crying foul on this. <laughs> I, like I say, I want this school's, uh, budget. I want their budget. Yeah, I know. If- Every school should have this level of budget, just better leadership. Yeah. I mean, good agree. True that. But okay, in terms of toy marketing and toy selling, I do like how they're doing it. Instead of forcing it in our faces and trying to, well, sell a toy, they at least kind of make it work. Uh, yeah, they're not forcing it in our faces. They're forcing it into the story. Well, which has worked, which it worked, like the bow and arrow scene was awesome, the roller yeah. skate scene was, well, hit and miss, and the motocross scene was, <sighs> safety first, kids. Uh, no, no, you know, the, 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 the bow, the, the, the archery scene with Twilight, that is, oh, that, yeah. that, that, that kills me, yeah. that is heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. That, that, you, you can, you can feel the, the humiliation going there, that's, it's it's awful, but it's awful for all the good reasons. Like, oh my god, this is terrible, this is horrible, why am I liking it so much? It's <laughs> Here's the thing also that I really don't understand. Why didn't her partner help her with the vine swing or even with the archery? It's like, you want to advance, right? Why not help? Because, because this is... Crystal prep sucks. Because these people are idiots. Like I say, they don't strategize. They don't say, hey, we should have a mixed team to have diversity and therefore adaptability. You know, boys and girls working together. They don't want to do that. Mm. Uh, they don't want to coach their team and make sure they're well suited to the sports they have to play. Well, okay. I, I have to bring something up because I know if I don't bring it up, the audience will. And what principal clinch of Miss Boring Pants said was archery is a standardized activity in their school so everybody should know how to shoot a bow and arrow. Actually, Twilight well, does yeah. know how to shoot a bow and arrow. She just is not great at hitting it. Again, yeah. Yeah. they they missed their mark there. <laughs> uh, well, she does know how to shoot a bow and arrow but what they don't take into consideration is the pressure that she will be submitted to when like doing so. Everybody's looking at her, her high school, other high school. She is... The, it's the first test. Of course, she's not going to she's not going to do it perfect at first. And if she has no support from her uh, high school uh, classmates, 
she, she's gonna feel so alone, and that I'm pretty sure that in that moment, Twilight felt like the loneliest person in the planet until Applejack showed up. And this is the other thing that I really liked: how each one of the main six gets introduced to, like you know, start gets ponied up. But it's very natural. It's not like, like it, it moves with the story. It doesn't get like forced or like pulled out of nowhere. Like no, it does make sense. So when Applejack tells her how to shoot a bow and arrow and how to like this is how, what you have to do you have you have to trust me and the other one is like don't trust me don't tr- don't trust her she's t- your competitor you're you're competing against her but she was telling her the truth mm-hmm. which makes Applejack pony up and that makes Twilight absorb the magic out of Applejack which uh, it's it's powerful enough to knock the pendant out of her neck and that opens up a bunch of portals all over the playing field. Oh, Out of which start coming sentient plants that start attacking the students. Have we seen those plants and before? And somehow the competition, how, somehow the competition keeps going. Yeah, those are the plunder binds from the first, uh, from the premiere of season really? four, aren't they? I they look they're, like them. They're cousins, I guess. I mean, you know, the same, the same genus. <laughs> Long uh, distance relatives. Long distance relatives. I don't know. They're from the home field. <laughs> uh. Uh, you can say but, that. So, but the, but they were sliding into home, which was a kind of a foul ball. But the but the M <laughs> called it good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the motorcycle, motocross in this school with all the jumps they need to do, and I just have to say that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. What, what's dangerous is that a sane human being would go like, "Oh my god, oh my god, giant plants run away." Everyone else is in the bleachers just watching this unfold. And the teams are like, oh, we still have to finish the motor race. And I'm sitting in the audience going, you people are morons! <laughs> Run! Run away! <laughs> Get out of here! Oh, like, well. You are going this, to die! At this point, there is no excuse for them to, for someone to get out of a fire axe and start hacking no, plants no, no. like le- left and right. Like, why aren't they doing that? Or at least call the police, call someone. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like what and Principal it's, Cinch said. It's their trained yeah. attack plant. <laughs> it's trained. <laughs> Trained up plant attack plants and your students have wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we forgot to mention that Rainbow Dash pony up. We forgot to mention. Yeah, that. Rainbow Dash pony up because and th- that's 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 one thing that I that I also liked of this scene and of the movie in general. Have you realized how each one of the main six has ponied up with uh, when when interacting with Twilight? In this case, uh, Rainbow Dash ponies up because she's interacting with uh, with Sunset. Because Sunset gets attacked by one of the plants, and she's left behind, so Rainbow Dash goes back to get her, and that Wait. loyalty gets her ponied up. Mm, I, she, she's left behind? Does that mean everyone else was raptured? <laughs> ah! Silver! Uh, uh, but I think... We don't talk about that movie! <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Have you watched it? Of course not. <laughs> oh, I have. Oh, well. <laughs> I read the first book and that was all I needed. Thank you. Oh, I, I, I watched the movie. That's an hour and a half of my life that I am not getting back. Uh, oh well. It, it's 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 a, I know tangent and all that, but that's something when you can safely say it's the worst Nicolas Cage movie <laughs> ever. Uh, Better be than bees. The bees. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Seriously, Left Behind is Nicolas Cage's worst movie. Back uh, to Friendship Games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Friendship oh. Games. So basically. The fact that they feel the need to complete the motocross in the midst of a giant vine attack is just... The mind boggles. Mm. Truly, Darwinism has skipped five <laughs> generations. We are living in a natural selection void. Yeah. The stupid shall breed <laughs> and inherit the earth. But still, uh, CHS won. And this is where we get the worst line in the movie. Oh. Aw. After the principal has... Now, granted, I'm saying this after a principal says you have trained attack plans <laughs> and, and students with wings. Because, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Sunset says <laughs> it's not a win unless the other team knows they've lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is so dumb. That is the worst, most unhealthy attitude to take into a competition. It's the reason Xbox Live sucks. <laughs> 
Well, but it is true. Th- those people who have those mindsets do exist. And the fact yes, that... Yes, that's need- why online gaming sucks. True, but the fact that you want to rub it in is also there too. It is in poor sportsmanship, but still, I don't know. Me agreeing to it, no. But the fact that Crystal Prep won against them for, what, five times in a row now does sting. And Crystal and CHS wanting to prove a point where, hey, we're awesome now. We can win too. You can say that to yourself. We won. We know we won. The other team will always have sour grapes. They'll always say something to lessen the victory. Call John's. I don't know what that is. It's something in the Smash community. Smash Bros. Oh, well, community. Yeah. I like oh, to say, oh god. See, see, go if, ahead, if, if, if it isn't obvious, I don't enjoy online gaming because people do need to make sure that you know they won or they need to try to not just make you say you lost, but you suck for losing. Yeah, um, and you lost. Is, you lost. I'm gonna rub it on your face. After a while, it just gets so. Good lord, this isn't even fun. You can't even laugh off a loss. Mm-hmm. Just what a waste of time. Yeah, that, that's. I mean, yeah. but in the situation that the show's in right now, it's understandable. Do I do I agree with it? No, I don't, because that's poor sportsmanship. Oh, but the, but the other thing is they've been showing Camelot High is actually this really cool place where they law, they lose, and people still celebrate them. Uh, what was it? The guys from the, from Flash's short video, the, the hippie and the mm-hmm. geek, uh, the, the purple skin geek, by the way, favorite background human. <laughs> uh, he, they just are like, ah, it's all cool and just walk off. It's like, hey, there you go. Mm-hmm. No one likes losing, True. but there's no, but, there's no need to feel ashamed either. Mm, true, true. You gave it, you gave it your best shot. Next time, do but be- you can do better. Mm, that is true. That is true. When you go into a game or when you play a game, and if you lose, well, you lose. You, that means you're not good enough. Learn from your mistakes and get better. Yeah, and it's okay to ch- to chafe under losing, but at some point you got to just get over it mm-hmm. and win the next time. Mm-hmm. True that. True that. But. In terms of Sunset's mindset here, everybody here was expecting or everybody here wants to win, but they want to win fair and square and what she said. And with magic and how it happened, she's really under a lot of stress and that's why she said things. And talking about saying things, she rages at Twilight because Twilight opened portal magic and endangered her friends. And things were said. Things were said. Now, to be honest, uh, but with the whole we use magic to win, uh, Maloney, you you still won fair and square while attacked by giant plants. You're still idiots. Mm, true. Uh, but that's pretty damn impressive. I'd give double points for that. Uh, true. But it's Principal Cinch. She's just trying to find a way to, well, <laughs> I don't know what the word is. She's just a sore loser. No, you have to say it from her point of view, guys. Try to sell it to us, James. Easy. Your students have wings. <laughs> What's going on here? Red Bull. Like, no, you need to explain it. No, no. You need to explain to, do you have a, uh, are you, are you meddling with their DNA? Can I have some of that too? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, at this point, there is no reason for Principal Sinch not to contact the school board and go, uh, yeah, they, they are doing weird things with their students in this high school. Yeah, you need to stop them. Uh, <laughs> what are they doing? They have magic powers and they are using the... Okay, fine. Uh, Looney Ban again. <laughs> uh, but still, but still. Um, now, that, I thought, I thought her, her reaction should be, Oh my god, oh my god, run away, run away! <laughs> uh, true that. That's also true. But uh, since the game... Since Cinch doesn't want to end with a tie, they propose another game, the last and final, which is Capture the Flag. It's the one that they don't get to perform because uh-huh. uh, the principal Sinch goes to Twilight and she's like, hey, I'm going to sing a song that is going to be so good, I'm going to convince you to use that portal thing on your friends. What friends? And it's, and it's the last yeah. song of the movie before the credits. Mm-hmm. What, whoop to friggin' do. Hey, we're still bad. And, well, by this point, the pendant of magicking, seeking, whatever it is, has absorbed 
Rainbow Dashes, uh, Magical Power, Applejack, Rarity, Fluttershy, Pinky, and also quote unquote Sunset's power. And when she releases the magic within the pendant, she transforms into what the fans are calling her Midnight Sparkle. Well, that's what the toy calls her too. Oh, really? No. Yep. Oh, cool. But what do you think of this new form? I mean, well, first of all, I love, I love the fact that they are doing this. Mm-hmm. Like, out of all the characters that were to be turned into an evil demon, thinny creature of hell, spawn, oh my god, she's going to devour our souls and she's going to eat us alive, run away! Uh, Twilight is the last one anybody, I think anybody here was expecting. expecting. Yeah. I would have thought the teacher, but no, it's Twilight. I was... I was in the spe- you know what you know what I thought was gonna happen? I thought they were going to open the portal to Equestria and a terrible creature from God knows where was going to slip out and into the, the human world and they were going to fight that thing. But no, they don't do that. Instead they, they, they turn Twilight into a demon. And that's I, I really like that idea because out of all the characters I think she's the most innocent. She's not acting because she wants to take control of something. She doesn't want to invade another world or destroy this one or get revenge or anything. She just wants to know. She just wants to understand. Mm -hmm. She wants knowledge. True, true. And that curiosity gets paid by getting transformed and mutated. And it's, she's, it's a very dark, dark moment. Like, Look at the way that she's been absorbed inside that ball of energy. She's not happy. She's freaking out. She's, oh, yeah. And th- that final word, help me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I can imagine the little kid is at home. Mommy, that's scary. But it's, it's so cool. Yeah. That, it's cool. It's cool. It is really cool. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I, I thought it was great. And for any kid, any kid crying that scene, I watched Optimus Prime die, you little twerp. <laughs> you shut up with your face. Uh, well, but, but here's the thing, uh, when I saw this scene, I was surprised. I, I really enjoyed what happened. The horns, the wings, like, oh my god, like. Yeah, mm. that, she turns into a, into a proper <laughs> alicorn demon thingy. Yeah, did you see how crooked that horn was? Uh, yeah, it looks like a change in horn. Yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is, um, this is the first time they've actually featured horns yeah. for a, a pony form. Mm. Up until yeah. now, I guess they've, they've been afraid that it would look freaky on a human forehead, but if you make it glowing, it's mm-hmm. there, but it doesn't look attached. I, I think the only reason why they push it to this point was because of how much magical energy they absorbed. Like, in terms of story... In terms of the design, I think we're talking... Yeah, well, in terms of design, yes, but in terms of story, they absorb a lot of magic to for that to happen. And when Twilight here transforms, or Midnight here transforms, she opens parallel universes to Equestria, clearly stating that she wants to destroy this world and go to the other one, just for the sake of knowledge. Which will be interesting, because... When she goes to the other world, will she still be human or pony? At this point, I I think people are just sort of, eh, I don't really care. <laughs> you know what? It's, Considering you know, that when they were falling into the portal, you know, into the different rifts that were open between dimensions, they were falling into them, but they were not transforming into ponies. I think we can safely say they would then turn into ponies. Although that would be freaky. Can you imagine them falling into and suddenly turning into a pony? It's like, ah, ah, where are my fingers? <laughs> no, Why on. do I feel so adorable? Did, did, did you see the portal when it opened? A pony was looking right at them like, what is this hole? What is that? I think that was Trixie. No, no, no. Trixie wasn't there, I think. I'm surprised it wasn't Lyra. I think that was Trixie. <laughs> Lara is running to one of the reeds saying, yes, now it's my chance, I can do it. And then Sunset closes the portal and so she's like, ah, poo. Talking about Sunset, Sunset absorbs the power of the main five and transforms to a Elecorn Pony Princess too. Yeah. 
Bas- basically, she she powers up. She attains what she always wanted. That's the funny thing. Oh yeah. She o- she always wanted to be a princess, mm-hmm. to have that power. But it's only after she let go of that need that it actually happened. Mm. Yeah. She wanted to be a leader. She wanted to to to. Yeah. She wanted to lead. And well, this is her chance, and she did great. Like totally, man. She knew exactly what to do. Mm-hmm. Now it, it's a pretty short-lived conflict. There's like one kamehameha between them. True. Yeah, that's so disappointing. I was like, "Come on, let's duke it up. Let's duke it up. Have some fights. Come on, you can do this. We have seen Twilight beat the crap out of Tyra at the end of season four. You can do this. No. Why the, aren't you doing this? The shortest, bet- <laughs> the shortest battle that I've seen that was impressive was Princess Celestia versus uh, Nightmare Moon. That was impressive for a battle. Short, but impressive. Well, this one, it, there, there is that Celestia versus Luna mentality, except here, when Sunset offers her hand to say, just come back. I know what you're going through, but you can come back from this. And unlike Luna, Twilight listens. Because Twilight's not that far out to left field. Mm, true, true. Yeah, there is a bit of, uh, uh, there is, there is still some benign nature left in Twilight. Mm-hmm. So it, it's short lived, but it's very well done. Yeah. Yeah. Which w- what a great moment, by the way. The way mm-hmm. that that they, they they in that tiny little little scene, they close Sunset's story arc, character arc. They 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 bring it full circle, because the the same way that it happened in the first movie, where Sunset was the one getting stabbed in the face by the magic of friendship. Mm-hmm. In this one, Sunset doesn't even use that. She's not blasting, well, she did blast Twilight in the face, but she didn't use that to reform her. She's offering her hand. So in a sense, Sunset is doing something better than the main six in that regard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no magical rainbows of conversion required. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No need to break any, uh, any magic, well, the magic pendant is gone. The one that, that Twilight built, Sunset broke that in order to release the magic of friendship, but it's not, it, it's not the, Suck magic, boom! You get it fixed. Don't get out, get out back, or get back home. It's like, they don't do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So glad that they don't do that anymore. Yeah. Oh, so, that was good. So how can they spoil this well done ending? Hmm. By so saying bring every... a principal change, of course. Actually, even there, well, I guess she gets booed off screen, basically. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but the way she got but, booed was pretty fun. But uh, then, then. This ties back. This ties back to sunsets. It's not a victory unless we know the the other team knows they lost. Now we have Principal Celestia saying, "Well, I think we agree. We all won. Yay! Yeah. No. <laughs> no. There will there will be no yay. You you you, you two are the other. I'm not a fan of the mentality that everyone gets a medal just for showing up. Uh, true, yeah, I hate but, that. I hate that. But uh, Grant, no, no, seriously. It, it's like, it's like, well, now that the high school is over, we are going to give medals, but it doesn't matter because you are all winners. Yay! It's true, but... You survived! The, okay, 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 in terms of logic, real world logic, yes, that sucks. That, that, that's not fair. The, the, even the guy who didn't do anything got a medal, like, yeah, whatever. It, it's, it's the patronizing mentality that, that, by making everybody special, you are automatically making nobody special. Yes, that was the line I was going for. Um, yeah. When you make everyone a winner, nobody's a winner. Yeah, exactly. But but still, didn't they make that? In the, the Incredibles made a very good yeah. point on it. Yeah, everybody's yeah. special. That is another way of saying nobody's super, right? special. No, that, no, no, no. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, there is an early scene at yeah, the yeah. beginning of the of the Incredibles. I where, think this was the uh, ending, like where, near the end, where Mister Incredible near was near the end. Yeah, 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 like, uh, Syndrome was talking about that, mm-hmm. but no, there is one scene at the beginning of the movie between the kid and her mother, and his mother, and, and the mother is like, everybody is special, and the kid is like, that is another way of saying that nobody is. Mm. But anyway. That anyway. reflects later on the super mentality mm. and all that, and that goes into what happened at the end, what happens at the end of this movie. Yeah, but, but for this one, I say that, well, better than ending it as a tie, and everyone feeling down, you know what? Let's just say everyone won, and let's just move on from this episode. Uh, well, I've I've got to I'm going to push on this because this mm-hmm. means a lot. Just as I say, Sunset's attitude of the other team has to know they lost is unhealthy. Oh, true that. Because, because it's it's adding 
a personal grudge to an event that really doesn't need it. But that same mentality is why people say, oh, everyone needs to get a medal because suddenly we don't want anyone to feel bad about losing. And that's not the way it is. You lose, it can drive you to be better. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to be the end of your end. In fact, maybe we need to celebrate more the great losses in in famous sports figures. <laughs> How many times yeah, did Babe Ruth? How many times did Babe Ruth strike strike out? No idea. Uh, well, neither do I. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. this, no, but no, you're absolutely true. You're absolutely right. You can learn more from a loss than from a victory. True, 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 true. Unless you go to CHS or Crystal Prep, in which case, man, I think the gene pool is just working against you there, man. Yeah, uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think that. But. After things have calmed down, Cadence is talking to Twilight and, well, saying that, well, with Cinch not wanting to get her reputation ruined, uh, there's a high chance that Twilight can go to Ever North, was it? Ever something. Evermore? Her school that she really wants to go to, that really special school for genius. Yeah. Nevermore. Ever something, whatever. So, Twilight's going to Canterlot High now, which kind of feels like this movie forgot half its cast. Granted, they weren't, mu they weren't much of a cast to begin with. Has, has Crystal Prep learned anything? Uh, honestly no. speaking, no. I don't see anything that's worth taking back. Well, it's, I, I, okay, great. Twi Human Twilight is now with the main Six, they are now the main seven all the time for Quest Your Girls 4. Mm. But would it have had more meaning for Twilight to stay at Crystal Prep and for the whole student body to learn more about friendship? Oh, true, Dad. That would be awesome. But I don't know, because the way that Twilight talked to Cadence about learning friendship and learning learning things about friendship, she said that at Crystal Prep, I won't be learning much there, so my as well transfer to CHS. Logic, yes, but it, that's the easy way out. Well, it's more like play. lack of, but okay. Actually, so, given that uh, Crystal Pet beats CHS at most academics, uh, they likely she'll learn even less academically. It's all social now. Oh, yeah, true. But she's a genius in terms of smarty pants things, because she was kind of Ace at her previous school, so she's a she's a mad genius because I mean, come on, that thing, that pendant portal absorbing magic absorbing thing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Doctor Insano is looking at that, saying, <laughs> "How did I come up with this thing?" <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh wow! But yes, you're right. Crystal Prep and CHS, they haven't learned anything. None of but the students haven't learned anything. I, I, they didn't I, move forward when it comes to that. You're absolutely right. But I do feel that probably they will take this as a lesson where you need to be friendly to one another, especially for Crystal Prep now, because the way they were acting is not good. And I'm guessing that Principal Sinch right now is probably going to move away because she didn't really want to have that record where both team win or both school won. So yeah, probably she's moving and Dean Cadence will be in charge. Actually, she's going to become a freelance tutor to the Sirens who need to get a job. Oh yeah, true that. But anyway, with that, the movie ends. Yay! Not, except not really because we have an after, an after the credits scene where... Pony Twilight comes through the portal saying, well, I'm very so sorry. I was dealing with the end of season five, which I am just <laughs> spoiling for everyone here. And, oh, hey, me of this world. This is weird. The end. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's hilarious. Wow. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, the hijinks. You can totally end that with, with the, with the <laughs> silver. Just play the clip. <laughs> which clip? Oh. Yeah, play, play. No, 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 play the, play the, the fanfare, man, oh, okay. play the fanfare. There is no other way to end the movie than that we play the fanfare. Uh, but no, don't do that like, now. We don't really indicate well, this is weird. No. Uh, but anyway, mm. but anyway, let's talk about this one for a bit, because I find this fascinating in for terms of... 
what do you want to talk about for this scene? It's what Twilight said because um, time portal magic tiggy magic whatever that's it is that's for season 5 season 5 ending that they completely spoiled or that they hinted what it's going to be about mm. but from what I understand from the whole scheduling season 5 was supposed to end around this time before the movie came out if there was no 3 month hiatus the ending would have totally came in well in line with this one but since this one came soon and probably we get spoiled, we will just have to wait and see. It'll be something interesting. And if they do do that, this would have marked the point where the movie referenced something in the show that is blatant. Hmm. Well, I guess in I hindsight know. it would make a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes a teaser isn't. All she said is that there's time travel involved. We don't know anything else. If you've avoided the online spoilers, you really don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. other than the good guys are going to make it through. And let's be honest, are we at, was that ever in doubt? Yep, true. But still, um, I'm expecting a blue box right now. Daleks probably. Or oh, cyber ponies. So yeah. <laughs> Love and tolerate. Love and tolerate. <sighs> and with that, the movie ends. We have a special medal for you all. It is called Death. <laughs> Exterminate! Uh, oh gosh. No! Of course, I have to end with a Doctor Who joke. Uh, it's, okay, well, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think we can, we can make like final thoughts, yes. conclusions. Mm-hmm. If we change our mind after, uh, after the review or, 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 or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, spoiler, I haven't. Mm-hmm. But, uh, <laughs> but what, what did you guys, what would you guys, uh, uh, say to end this one? Like, what would you think? And as always, inverted alphabetical order. Well, this is draws a nice close to Sunset Shimmer's redemption arc. She, having over, having made, fallen from grace, pulled herself back up, and now redeemed someone else. Sunset's completed one journey. Now, this doesn't mean it's the end of her story. She still has the question of, what do I do now in this world? What What is my purpose? You know, look to the future, as you kind of you need to start doing in high school. Mm-hmm. That's the period in life where you start to ask, what do I really want to do? And believe me, guys, here I am, graduated from college, working in fields I never expected, and doing a pony review show. <laughs> True. Uh, so don't, don't, don't stress about it, but it's good to ask questions. The problem is, though, that once again, the, the, uh, the human five are really more background characters. They're, they're never going to really feature in these movies as with their own personal goals. And the rest of the world just sort of takes a back seat. They have very little agency. This is probably the middle road of the Equestria Girls movies. Rainbow Rocks remains my favorite. Equestria hmm. Girls was a lackluster start. This one is the compromise. So, in terms of this movie, I, like I mentioned previously before, like at the very beginning until now, I still like this movie with its problems. I'm not saying this movie is perfect. I, what I'm saying is that I highly enjoy this movie, even with its problems. When I first saw the, when, when I saw this movie, sorry, when I saw this movie, I felt that, hey, they're, they're reusing the same beats as before. Like, hey, um, here you got a fish out of water story, that's Twilight. And you got this scenario where, oh, this is almost like the sirens. And, and that scenario at the front of the school, hey, this is almost like sunset when she became a, she demon, a flaming she demon to mind control everyone, but they did it better here. So to me, the show or the movie, it kind of retold the previous two, but done better. Do I find it bad? No, I I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Like it was worth waking up at eight a.m. to watch it after having four hours of sleep. So yes, yeah. it was worth it was worth it. Um, would I say this is perfect? No, not really. There's, in terms of pony movie, this is the best one out of the two. But still, it has its problem, but I can, I, I find it very enjoyable that it didn't deter from my enjoyment. 
As for sunset, like Silver said, her journey starts and ends. And now, there's a new beginning for her. And after that, what can I say? I enjoy it. Music's awesome. Art's better. Celestia doesn't look freaky. And yeah, awesome. James, what about you, man? Hmm. Uh, well, what to say that you guys haven't said yet. Uh, this is my favorite one out of all the three. I thought the characters were a lot more likable. The, the, there was, uh, it, it felt a lot less bleak, which is weird for me to say that, but I always found Rainbow Rocks to be very bleak, very, uh, uh, very dark on that regard. And maybe I didn't watch it with the, with the right mindset, but I, I think this one tramples both movies because it, I find it more engaging. I find it more interesting and as Loki as her, as the conflict is in the movie, because the conflict is very low, it's very small, it's very reduced. Even, even the, the, the climax doesn't happen in the middle of the, of a, of a big stage at night. It, it happens in the middle, it happens, it happens on the backyard. No, no, on the, on the front lawn of the high school in the middle of the day. So it's not, it, it, even with that, it's very small scale, but because it's more small scale, I find it more engaging. And it, it grabs me a lot better. I like Sunset Shimmer. I really like Science Twilight. Uh, I thought that the, 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 I thought that the Crystal Prep students were forgettable in their names, but memorable in their personalities. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I like the one that is super sporty, the one that is brutally honest and very mean, the one that has like, a uh, personality disorder, where she's like, oh, I'm so sweet, but then I am really mean, and I, yes. <laughs> And I like that they didn't follow the romance angle, which I was very glad. I was like, oh god, if they start shipping Science Toilet with Flash Sentry, this is gonna be so boring. But they don't do that. And because they don't do the things that I, they do the things that I don't expect, uh, it's, it's more interesting to watch. So, yeah. Be besides, okay, I watched it like, what, ten times already? It's unfair for me to say it's memorable. I watched it a lot of times. So of course it's memorable. Uh, it's engraved in my mind, but I find it a lot more interesting and worth watching than than the, than uh, the second movie, at least. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I am going to be in the minority. Everybody's saying that the second one is the is the best. Everybody's going to be with Silver, and they're gonna go set my house on fire. <laughs> I mean, come on, uh, that's not fair. That's not fair. Everyone has their own opinion, and. Uh, you liking this one and you saying this is the best out of the three, it's, it's your opinion. And Silver says the second one was better. I can see both points. Um, to me, in terms of how I feel about the music, the second one was much better. And uh, but in terms of story, I do like the third one. I just want to say, don't don't light uh, James's place on fire, please. How, however, his home is a little lacking in the feng shui. If anyone would like to redecorate, please. Feel, feel <laughs> oh, well. Sorry, we don't like sushi all that much. Um, oh, well. Only my sister and I. <laughs> uh, but um, I guess I guess I understand how people feel when they say that their favorite Mad Max movie is Thunderdome. It's like I guess, I guess they they can have Thunderdome to me. I have Friendship Games. Yeah, yeah that's cool. which is weird. I, I very rarely like the second sequel. That has only happened once before, and that's with the Ocean's Eleven series. I thought that Ocean's 13 is the best. Same goes with Friendship Games. I think Friendship Games is the best of the Aggressor Girls movies. Alright, that's cool. Go figure. Anyway, guys, I need to mention something. Because with this, I, I think in a previous tweet, um, the director for this movie, who was it? Paul or? Ishi Rudel. Yeah, Ishi Rudel has, be, has also been directing, uh, episodes of season 5. Since we came back from the hiatus. Mm -hmm. So every new episode that we have seen has been directed by Ishi Rudel and Big Jim Miller with Jason Thyssen in the supervising director seat. Someone asked him, are we going to get more EQG? And he said, yes, there's a high chance. And with that high chance, uh, there was this article way back when to do with Hasbro and it stated Legend of the Everfree. And in that picture, it shows humans. So do you think that a spin-off show from Equestria Girls are going to come? I'm not sure. I mean, one, Everfree Forest itself is kind of, uh, even the ponies don't really make, take full advantage of that now. Hmm. I don't know how much to, to invest right now. It all sounds like rumors and even images that come out would seem like, uh, 
I I take them with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. But still, um, let's just say that yes, there's going to be a spin-off series. You know, I will say this: before Rainbow, before Friendship Games, I wouldn't have wanted to watch it. After Friendship Games, I cannot wait for it. Okay. Like I really want to, I really want to watch that 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 spin-off now. And it's weird. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> now I feel like they are doing, they're playing the siren thing on me. They're mm -hmm. brainwashing me. Silva, what about you, man? Well, actually, I'm looking at the... Okay, so apparently Legends Ever Free is actually an official image. Right there with Transformers Combiner Wars. Yeah. What's up? And also um, Transformers, the... What do you call that? Uh, Prime, was it? No, not Prime, but... The animated Ro series. No, no. Robots no. in Disguise. Yeah, Robots in Disguise Season 2, yes. And featuring Optimus Prime. So, yay. He's gonna be in there. Yay. I'm hyped. But, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, if they say that there are humans in Equestria in the Everfree Forest, if one of them's named Megan, <laughs> we're in trouble. Well, you know that there is a Sekora toy, right? An Equestria Girl Sekora toy. Yeah. Well, just there's a toy. I saw, I saw it. I had, I had it on my hands. So, so it's, it's just it's a toy. Not a thing. It's just a toy. Yeah, but hey, the toy needs to be promoted, and the TV show and the movies yeah. are the way that they promote it. But anyway, but anyway, with that, if there's a Equestria Girl series, um, we'll be sure to review it because that's what we do. We love reviewing shows. Yay. But anyway, I, I think the reviews ended and I would like to thank everyone that voted. And thank you very much because we get to talk about this movie and I like to thank the crew who made the movie because it was so much fun. Yeah, and thank you for listening, guys. Mm -hmm. Gracias. So, James, what are we going to do next week? I have no idea. Um, we have a good couple of... I, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea. We have a lot of things to pick from. We can review the uh, Friends Forever comics. Mm -hmm. We can review the... We, we can wait until the Siege for the Crystal Empire Finish, uh, yeah. comics are over, and then we can review those. Or we can catch up with the TV show and review the four episodes that are already... No, oh, wait a minute. The five episodes <laughs> that are already out. Well, we decide on what we want to do. Next week's... Well, next week is going to be a comic review. It's going to be the mainline comic, issue 22 and 23. Studibot will try and edit it so it doesn't sound awkward and weird when we're talking about... Um, we still haven't decided what review we're going to do. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's going to be out for next week. So, be sure to catch that one out. Um, issue 22 and 23, the vampire bats ponies. Yay. It's perfect because Halloween. Yay. 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 <sighs> Talking about Halloween, we really need to review that episode. Mm. <laughs> oh, I wa we, You know what? We should review that one. Yeah. Well, that one yeah. is after. Mm. Well, we'll big put a surprise. I'm still confused. Anyway, uh, James, take <laughs> us out. Take us out. For dinner? Wow, my pleasure. Yeah. Okay. See you guys later. I'm gonna take these two guys for dinner. This has been James Cork. And I am confusing Norman Sanzo. And I am baseball quoting Silver Quill. Yay. Hit it and miss. <laughs> <laughs> He's swinging for the benches. Uh, home run. Chewing tobacco. Please, get me out of here. I, oh, you cannot stand these two guys and their baseball references. They're going to kill me one of these days. Third base. Last century wishes uh -huh. he could get to third base. <laughs> <laughs> uh, goodbye. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Adios. Yeah. Yay, You're so specific with your soundbox, Tinny. Oh my god. Well, I, <sighs> want you, I want you to give a proper goodbye to these lovely people.